Hi, everybody. My name is Nettie Legassi. I'm the Associate Executive Director at NISO, and I'm here to talk about uh, two working groups that we've had underway for a little while with some outputs that I hope you'll be interested in. So uh, we have a short time and I will move fast. I'll try to move fast. So um, just an outline, I'm going to describe the two projects uh, so that hopefully you'll distinguish them. They are different, although they cover metadata. Um, I want to talk about what is a NISO recommended practice in general. Um, and then I'll talk about the work of the two groups, one on eBooks and one on video and audio metadata materials, and then talk about what's coming next. So uh, the two projects, uh, one is called um, Ebook bibliographic metadata requirements in the sale, publication, discovery, delivery, and preservation supply chain. That's quite a mouthful. We call it the ebook metadata working group. Um, this work is almost done. Uh, we are hoping to see some output in the early part of uh, next year, 2021. And uh, the second group, Video and Audio Metadata is our affectionate name, uh, has a full name. It's called Assessing Video and Audio Metadata Recommendations and Standards for Academic Research and Professional Information. And this work is still underway and I would say it is not almost done. So um, a little bit of more information for the ebook metadata. Um, they've done all of the, um, the outputs uh, they put together a draft recommendation, which was available for public comment a few months ago. The comments have arrived and the group is now finalizing um, the work and we hope to publish it at NISO early part of the year. I'm, I'm hoping January. Uh, the second group, the audio and video metadata, um, it's still in the analysis phase, and I'll talk a little bit about this during uh, the presentation, but uh, we haven't quite reached the drafting stage, so I think it's still some months before uh, you may even see it for public comment. However, it's still, I think, very interesting and um, uh, uh, good work that's going on. It's just, you know, a little behind the, um, the work. And these two groups were not uh, set out at the same time. They are uh, really running on, on different tracks. So that's, that's not a problem. So uh, what is a NISO recommended practice? Well, um, NISO publishes standards and recommended practices. And standards are um, uh, high level, um, a lot of musts and um, mays or shoulds, very formal. Um, they have uh, a longer process because at NISO we are accredited by ANSI, the American National Standards Institute, and so there's procedures that uh, go along with that. However, recommended practices are um, not standards. They are lower level documents. They don't have the same um, uh, musts and shoulds. And in fact, uh, some aspects of recommended practices are um, wholly optional. Actually, all parts of recommended practices are optional. They are simply meant to uh, provide uh, leading examples or um, uh, best, uh, best work, help people in the community understand how to do something. So both of these documents, of these working groups are creating recommended practices, which still are run the same way as our standards group. So at NISO, we really work on um, uh, putting, bringing together different communities to collaborate on solutions to problems. We have formal procedures, and that's my job, is making sure that the procedures and the processes are followed in all working groups, and that we all reach consensus at the end of the work. Um, so that hopefully we all agree on uh, what might be included in the recommendations. So um, for the ebook metadata working group, um, it had really a pretty ambitious charge when it first was created. Um, it uh, included all the things you see in this slide. So what are minimal metadata requirements necessary to support work for all kinds of different stakeholders? Um, what's the best uh, way to move metadata through the supply chain so that information is not lost, is transmitted accurately? Um, how would records be updated? What's the best way for that? How to match metadata from multiple sources? Um, what are examples? And then also, 
um, what kinds of recommendations might be established for conformance, particularly for Onyx and Mark, which are the um, most common metadata formats in ebook uh, world. This was really ambitious. Um, the group started its work and in discussions realized um, all of these outputs would be uh, hard to do, but they did accomplish uh, a great deal of um, the, L, the, the, the pieces of them. For just a slide to give credit for the members of the working group, uh, which represents um, all major stakeholders in the ebook industry, including librarians, uh, many publishers, secondary and primary publishers, trade and academic publishers, service providers for libraries and service providers for publishers um, to these and um, uh, preservation entities as well. So um, what were the outputs or what were the, the general findings? Um, metadata is really complicated in ebook world. So some metadata gap, gaps that the group uh, found through its processes were that even when uh, metadata would be valid according to a particular standard, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's uh, quality for whatever purpose it's meant for. It may uh, validate or pass uh, a schema test, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's good for whatever the person or process uh, is requiring. Um, and then concepts are represented in different ways within the same standard. I think Mark is a really big offender for this, where uh, something that you're trying to express may be in one part of the record or it may be in another part of the record, depending on who's creating it. And that uh, obviously can create confusion when you're shipping many, many records across and trying to process them in consistent ways. Um, and then of course, across standards, uh, different standards uh, interpret a concept in slightly different ways for their audience. And that can be a frequent uh, pain point in communication and interoperability. And then uh, mainly, this is, the, this is what the group tried to pay most attention to, um, that there's not enough attention to the context in which metadata exists how it's received, shared, used, enriched, corrected, distributed for its entire life cycle. What this working group, the ebook metadata working group um, really worked on was trying to establish um, uh, enough information in its recommendations for each stakeholder to better understand other stakeholders and the kinds of requirements that um, that are needed for each stakeholder in the ebook area. So a publisher might better understand the kinds of uh, tasks that a librarian is trying to accomplish and how uh, their metadata might uh, help or hinder those tasks. By the same token, a librarian would better understand when a, a publisher is sending metadata the kinds of tasks that they are uh, accomplishing. So moving right along, um, the basic structure of the recommended practice, what, they, um, what the working group members did was examine five elements. It's very difficult to, or it's, it'd be more even complicated to um, uh, tackle all possible bibliographic elements. So they concentrated on five, which they figured were the core uh, uh, elements that people, parties pay enough attention to. And uh, so these are titles, names, dates, book identifiers, ISBNs, DOIs, and uh, subject terms. And then for each of the elements, this is what is the content of the recommended practice. There's a definition. Um, at a high level and then for each uh, party, general recommendations for um, how these might be uh, 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 managed or described or, or applied, use cases for each of the uh, parties, and then specific recommendations. So um, uh, really detailed to the level of if you're doing this, don't do that, um, please do not X, please Y. Um, uh, for each particular element. And then um, appendices show examples in different metadata um, uh, types for these elements. So just a few screenshots. Um, this is a, a use case for um, names. So different stakeholders, publishers, libraries, preservation agencies, library service providers, retailers and readers, what are their needs? Um, how are they coming to this particular metadata? What are they expecting? Uh, for this. And then uh, also just an example 
uh, for a name, how that name might be established. Um, this looks like, yeah, titles um, in bits in Mark, Mark XML, and Onyx. So um, the recommended practice in draft form is uh, about 40 pages. Um, and um, again, we hope to have it uh, finalized and available for uh, publication early in the year. The group is at, um, attending to the comments that were received and uh, making sure that those are addressed and the that they're responded to. So moving to the second group, our uh, video audio metadata working group, and this again is assessing video and audio metadata recommendations and standards for academic research and professional information. Um, this is a very uh, practical minded group. Um, it was uh, initiated by uh, someone in the community who is managing video assets and wants to be sure she's relatively, um, uh, you know, it's a, it's a new company and she wants to be sure that the information is um, usable. And so she was um, asking all of her clients and partners for what kinds of things that they needed to have for effective um, transactions. And uh, she thought it would be nice if we all could agree on what is needed. So this is the how the working group got together. Um, so for each person, each party person in this landscape, what information do they need so that they can interact with the systems that are relevant to them in the world of video and audio metadata. So uh, what this group is undertaking right now is uh, research. They're, they're still in their discovery phase, which I'll be explaining. Uh, the output when it is created next year, is intended to be a checklist of uh, metadata, what kind of, what elements for metadata in different metadata standards and um, some links and pointers to these other standards and other resources. So um, they are not creating a new standard. This is nothing new. They're simply using the standards that exist already for these types of assets and then making recommendations for what elements from these standards should be used when describing particular as, um, assets, particularly when they are intended to be interacting with other systems and what is not interacting with another system these days. Um, so when the group brainstormed, just to throw it in, they were uh, brainstorming on all the different media types and uh, came up with 71. So it's quite, quite a few dif different types of assets. Again, um, I want to uh, give credit to the members of this working group coming from different parts of the industry to discuss their own uh, perspectives, their own requirements, and their own expectations for what they might gain from the output of this group. And they've been working very hard to, um, to in this discovery phase that I mentioned. What the group has created so far is something they're calling a straw man. So um, they're, they created a structure um, consisting of bibliographic, technical, semantic, administrative, metadata areas. And then within each of the areas are um, uh, had created um, what kind of general elements are needed for the different levels. So for example, um, in a bibliographic um, uh, area, uh, you might need identifiers, contributors, publishers, original language, that kind of thing. At a first level, there may be there's second level or even um, more fine grained information. Um, for technical metadata, you might need certain elements. Um, and then um, what they're doing now is examining these uh, this construct against use cases for each of the uh, uh, parties, uh, stakeholders, and then uh, taking those use cases and examining them against actual standards. Can standards uh, satisfy the use cases if we have elements for each of these um, properties in the, the metadata? I'm not, I don't have any use cases to, um, to show you, but in general, they are, um, uh, examining use cases contributed by content creators, what is required for a content creator, discoverability, et cetera. Um, what do librarians need to accomplish when managing um, these kinds of assets, uh, preservation vendors or um, end users. And the standards, uh, again, when the group brainstormed what kind of standards are available in this area, there's quite a few, as you can see, what they have uh, selected 
are uh, six standards, PB Core, MODS, EDU Core, Dublin Core, MARC, and the Video Metadata Hub, and examining um, the elements uh, for each of these against the use cases and that straw man um, to uh, make more specific recommendations. If you are using PB Core, these are the elements of PB Core that you should apply to the uh, materials that you are producing or that you're sending out into the landscape. So what's more, what's next, what's more? Um, there, as I said, um, ebook metadata uh, output, we are expecting very early in the year. So please look for that on the NISO website. And uh, you can find out more about the video audio metadata guidelines also on the NISO website. Um, please follow NISO on Twitter. This is a great way to uh, keep up on the work that we're doing and um, what's next and when we announce projects for uh, public comment or uh, uh, availability. And on our website, there's also a way to sign up for our newsletter and you'll see what uh, when these come out when we'll announce them. So thank you so much and uh, stay safe and be well.